This video is about the budget drones versus the DJI drone. I still enjoy flying the budget drone, but if you want to get serious footage and you want to have something that you can actually count on that will fly the way that you direct it, the bang for your buck is in the DJI drones. After having flown three different drones, which isn't a lot compared to most of those who talk drones here on YouTube, I've learned a few things that are worth sharing. This video is of interest to you if you're in the market for your first drone because number one, my perspective is the one of a relative beginner just like yourself and number two, I'm not getting paid by anyone to make this video. It's honest. If you're interested in drones, I'm sure you've seen a ton of ads. There are so many drones out on the market. I bet that every time you look, you find a new favorite that is loaded with features and within or just outside your budget. How can you go wrong with a drone that will return to where it took off in case that anything goes wrong and that has GPS, a 4K camera and even image stabilization? You can buy some of them for around $200 and they'll be a lot of fun to fly. They also seem like the perfect choice to get your feet wet. You can learn the controls and get good with it before you risk crashing a $500 item you just bought. This was exactly my thinking when I ordered my Holy Stone HS700D. I paid just under 200 Canadian for this drone and it was a sweet deal. The exact same drone is still available on eBay and Amazon, but you'll likely pay closer to $300. I was not exactly the most careful beginner, wanting to learn the controls fast so I could capture great footage for this channel. Well, if you've been following me, you already know where that went. I got to fly the drone exactly three times before it flew off on its own, out of my control. Okay, this is kind of disappointing now what happened. I lost the drone. I lost, I lost the drone. drone. According to the manufacturer, this was impossible and yet it happened. I figured that there must have been a defect with my drone and tried to get a replacement from the seller. They offered a discount but asked a bunch of questions like how many satellites the drone was connected to and what temperature was it at the time of the flight. Since I had already bought my drone at the discount, the deal they were offering didn't seem so great anymore. So I skipped it. Thankfully, the ordeal also taught me something else. To fly any drone that weighs 250 grams or more in Canada, and apparently many other countries, you need a license and your drone has to be registered. <laughs> Oops. I don't know about you, but even with the drone exam costing only 10 bucks and registration only five, which may change soon, it is still a pain to have to do this for an entry level drone, which is basically a toy, as you'll find out. The test for your drone license is not hard if you do some research before taking it, but you still have to spend valuable time to get it. To be fair, the information you get from taking and passing this test is important. It can save you from getting into a lot of trouble. But my point is, you have to do more than ordering a $200 thing from Amazon in order to get into the drone game. No one on eBay or Amazon even tells you about that. It seems so simple. Just buy the thing and go fly. Back to my story, it really does get better. The next step for me was to take the basic drone exam. I passed it first shot and probably had 100% correct answers as I didn't get any notification about wrong ones or the actual score. Everything is done online. You can print your license when you're done. 
Now you can go fly, but you still have to be a whole lot more selective about where to do it. Not so fast, of course, I didn't go fly because I had no drone. What to do? When asking for advice on our local drone forum on Facebook, a lot of people recommended the DJI Mavic Mini. This is a sub 250 gram drone and compared to the drones I had been looking at, it was expensive. I did not trust myself with an expensive drone. So at first, I ordered a drone through Walmart from a third party seller that was only $129. In the description, it said that the weight of it would be around 350 grams and that it had a 1080p camera. Not bad. So how could I go wrong? The drone took about a month or so to arrive. It wasn't at all as described. The brand was different from what had been advertised and it came with only one battery instead of two. The thing was a toy, weighing under 100 grams. 350 grams was the weight of the entire package. I didn't fly that drone, knowing it wasn't what I wanted. Instead, I returned it to Walmart immediately. There are drones like that for around 50 bucks. I had been misguided by a stupid ad. This can happen so easily when you're new to drones. On paper, they can make it look great, but many budget drones are nothing but toys, except most toys can't fly. But I wasn't done. Call me obsessed, but I had another drone on order that was actually widely recommended for beginners. It was the JJRC X8 Cetus. I have to say that this drone was worth the money. 185 Canadian dollars or so for me it was a special. I had a lot of fun flying it and it was with this drone that I really got a lot better at flying. This is such a simple drone. You can crash it and nothing will happen. I've flown it into trees several times. All you have to do is pick it up and in one case I had to put the battery back in and recalibrate the GPS and you're back in business. Great stuff. But it still wasn't really what I wanted. The problem with the Cetus is that the camera is fixed. When flying forward, the drone will tilt downwards and you'll never see the horizon. I worked around that by flying backwards a lot and reversing the clips. That works as long as you're not filming moving vehicles. The other problem is that the drone can't fly really steady. The wind will always move it around, so the footage from the camera isn't great. You can find short segments in the footage that look sort of steady if you dig through it. So after a while I wasn't really satisfied with my Cetus regarding the video footage I got. I toyed with the idea of modifying it with a gimbal and a holder for my action camera. But that is not really legal in Canada for basic license holders like myself. What about building a drone? It would teach me a lot and I could enjoy flying something I built myself. I am still intrigued by the idea and would like to try it sometime. But the more I thought about it, the better I liked the idea of picking up a used Mavic Mini for around $300. Back to eBay I went and even put in a few bids. But those things are popular. At a certain price point, it just doesn't make sense to buy used stuff. 
I think it was in April that I saw the DJI Mini 2 on special, locally. It was a lot more money than I had been willing to spend, but I went out and got it anyways. Today I'm really glad that I did. This drone is far superior to anything you'll find on Amazon for a couple of hundred dollars. But I have to be honest here, I almost lost the drone on my very first flight when I flew it over the river and lost sight of it. Why do they make it gray? It's so tiny and when you're looking against the sun, you can easily lose sight of it. Once you get familiar with the app, the map is truly amazing and super reliable to locate the drone and direct it back to you. But at first, you won't know where to look. What happened on that first flight? Well, I was on the island and didn't see the drone on its return to home. My prior experience told me that the return to home wasn't always very precise. So I was afraid my new $700 flying camera was about to land in the water. I interrupted the return to home and flew toward the shore until the battery was critically low and the drone landed in the grass somewhere. <laughs> Thanks to the find my drone feature, I was able to find the drone, but wow, what an anxious 15 minutes or so. By the way, the return to home on the DJI drones is very precise. It would have landed safely on the island just as it was supposed to. Every level is low. Drone is coming home right now. To summarize, are budget drones worth it? It depends. If you're like me and you need time to figure out how to control the drone, at least if something goes wrong, you're not out a huge sum of money. It would have been very discouraging to lose the DJI Mini 2 on the first flight. There are also some very delicate parts on this drone. I'm talking about the gimbal. I'm sure that this would not hold up well in a crash. 
But I have to say that crashes are less likely because of how well this drone responds to the controller, even when it's windy. So here it is. Budget drones, like the Holy Stone and the Cetus, are a lot of fun. They are harder to control than the DJI. The footage is shaky. Almost all of them weigh over 250 grams, so you need a license and registration. They cannot go very far because the controller is cheap and the app works via Wi-Fi which tends to lose connection after about 400 meters or so. For GPS drones you have to do a dance with your drone every single time you fly it to calibrate that GPS. Those drones will leave you wanting more. They'll probably lead you to buy a DJI or other high-end drone in the end. My experience is with the DJI Mini 2, but I'm sure there are other quality products out there. However, DJI has a huge market presence and for good reasons. Their drones are well made and work as described. Of course, they also have GPS, but you do not have to calibrate it again and again after the first time. Unless you're doing something stupid, you'll not regret spending the money for a DJI Mini 2. It's a fantastic product and I'm still amazed at the value you get for your money. I highly recommend this drone. You can support my channel by clicking the like and subscribe buttons. I highly recommend my channel, so why not watch some more great videos?